If I ask you what is the hardest celestial body to land on in KSP, you would probably say Tylo and oh boy would we be correct, because landing on Tylo is an absolute nightmare. Even putting one Kerbal on Tylo is a giant achievement, but today we will put three Kerbals on there plus a rover. So let's go ahead and build the lander. Now building the lander, two things are important, thrust and fuel. We need fuel in order to land and we need thrust to land. And this is special about Tylo because Tylo needs a lot of fuel and a lot of thrust. It's not like with the interplanetary transfer stages, they have tons of fuel but not a lot of thrust but that's okay in that situation. And here uh, it's a bit more difficult because the problem is uh, if we add more engines we need more fuel and at the end we need more engines to haul this fuel because through more fuel it got heavier. So you see the dilemma with it's the dilemma with rockets generally. And here it really showed <laughs> because I had to fly hyper efficient and the build has to be hyper efficient. I'm not terribly good at that. Also testing was important as you can see here. I tested the thrust to weight ratio by lifting off on curbing because Tylo's gravity is almost as high as that on curbing. And with all that said the whole lander turned out to weigh over 150 tons at the end when I was done. But uh, yeah, th there were some unexpected difficulties through this mission and the end didn't turn out the way I thought it would turn out because, well, you, you will see it, you will see at the end. But yeah, at the beginning I thought like, oh, this is easier than I thought because the first concept of lander um, worked first try. But that was only the first concept, right? Here you can see testing thrust to weight ratio again. But yeah, the, the second problem we had uh, was where to put the rover and where to put engines. Uh, now you can see the engines are on the side, which further complicated the shape of the whole lander. Uh, yeah, because without a rover, you can just put the engines through down the middle, which makes sense. And then the other problem, you see tons of problems. The other problem was Fuel cross feed is so terribly bugged, I don't know, oh man, it was so bugged. You see, the problem is, if you have two fuel tanks that feed into one, a game just doesn't recognize it and it can't make sense of it. So the way to fix that, after like an hour of testing I found it out, the way to fix that, if you encounter that problem as well, is to have engines on the fuel tanks that feed into the main fuel tanks. So at the end I added mini little engines that just they're just there so the game works. Dumb, I know. But yeah, the flight profile of this mission will be that this lander, 150 ton lander, will get shot into orbit by a rocket. Then a second rocket will meet up with it with the transfer stage. Transfer stage docks to the lander, everything goes to Chul and Tylo. And then it comes back and the three seat command pod on the top, only that has heat shield and only that can land on Kerbin. So the whole crew will transfer into the lander and then land. And yeah, as it is as often, it perfectly worked out first try. But first of all, let's launch the lander. Here we are launching the first Kerbal into orbit and then the other four Kerbals that will attend this mission can dock with him and we can go to Tylo. Stage is staged, fairing is deployed, everything looking good, this worked out perfectly fine. No joke and here we are into orbit, we have shot it into orbit, second stage ahead, let's go. The transfer stage is on its way. And the other four Kerbal that will make up our five seat crew of this mission is on its way. And then we only need to dock to the lander and then we can reach for the stars and go to Tylo and Shu. And speaking of reaching for the stars, the first out of two transfer burns has started. This one will just raise our apoapsis above Kerbin so we don't crash into its atmosphere and we don't waste fuel. And this one here 
will bring us all the way to the Joule system and next up is stage deployment. As you can see here, the nuclear stage will travel all the way. And I'm really glad this stage has more fuel than I thought it would need. But let's leave Kerbin behind. Goodbye Kerbin. Let's go to the Joule system. And we are in the Julian system and this here is Tylo, but it's not the final approach, it's just the gravity assist. This here, this is the final approach and we are ready to fire up those engines, circularize and land and go to the monument on Tylo. Here we are, firing up the engines and circularizing around Tylo. So far, Everything has been easy, this has been a cakewalk, but then it gets serious. We drop our epilepsis down, we will go on a crash course with Tylo, and then the lander can deploy, and the transfer stage can reorbit and watch from afar how the other crew members are landing on our most difficult mission. Here we are, decoupling, now it gets serious, we have cut connection. To the transfer stage and the transfer stage is reorbiting. And the lander is slowly turning around. That is engine's face retrograde to the orbit and to safely deploy its three passengers on the surface of Tylo for the first time ever in history. But not before looking at the landscape, but the death landscape that lies before them. The challenge is real. So far so good, but the engines haven't fired once. Let's hope they all can ignite. The transfer stage is slowly watching above as the tension is rising and the engines are firing. Let's land on Tylo! The Kerbals have landed on Tylo. We managed it. And they all went into the rover. As you could see, the ladder was missing. I don't know why, and somewhere it got lost, but we managed it. The Kerbal spirit never dies. And then they're driving towards this weird monument in the distance. What could that only be? Who knows? Who knows? You know what? It could write your thoughts about the monument in, in the comments maybe you know what it is maybe you're a ksp lore expert but oh, that was weird somehow it's bugging out what the hell? but yeah we have arrived at the monument and the three kerbals can get out it's kind of a weird atmosphere here and 
done, Valentina Kerman can plant the flag. But somehow they can't get rid of the feeling that they're being watched by something or somebody. So they'd rather drive away than being in this weird atmosphere and they rather go home now, I guess. Yeah. So the only thing that's left to do now is dock the rover back onto the lander and then transfer into that three seat command pod on the top that will take them home to Kerbin. Kerbin, the planet they belong to, but here they have docked. And with that, the last leg of the journey has begun, getting back to Kerbin and leaving this weird place once and for all with no intention of ever coming back but here you can see the monument again they're watching it not knowing what to do with it but you know the solar system here is weird but then shutting down the engines they are on an orbital course they will get into orbit now they're finally in, a, in their orbit here is the orbit burn you can see Jewel in the background warming us with a hello and then we're orbiting around Tylo to find the transfer stage and dock with it and from here on out everything was smooth sailing so why is this video still so many minutes long you will see you will see smooth sailing from here on out we're docking then we're going back we're doing some burns here and there and then just entering the atmosphere of Kerbin you know, staging away this tank, we don't need it anymore. Then we're on our way home, home to our home planet of Kerbin. And here we are, goodbye Tylo, hello, interplanetary void. Then we encounter Kerbin, but what if I tell you, this whole time there has been something off. This whole time there has been something wrong in this mission. Because have you ever asked yourself how five Kerbals can fit in a three-seat command pod. And the other four Kerbal that will make up our five-seat crew up. Five-seat crew Five-seat Transfer stage doesn't have heat shields. We're screwed. We're screwed. The only thing we can do now is orbit because we have excess fuel. But we can't enter. We're, we're stranded in orbit. So what we need, more than ever now, is a rescue. That's right, a space shuttle came for our rescue! How cool is that? We only need to dock to it and then safely go home. Here we are docking to it, slowly but surely. And don't worry, we have extra seats on the space shuttle. This time I didn't screw up the seat number. We have docked, Kerbals transferred, we can go home. The transfer stage will stay in orbit here. You know, maybe some space tourists can check it out. But then our next task is to land safely at the KSC, which we have done before. And here you can see the planet of Kerbin lying before us. Marvelously beautiful. Then 
We can start our first deceleration entry. This will only serve to lower our orbit and make it circular because the fuel is running out on the space shuttle. Like I say, the fuel is running out. And then last burn remaining and we can safely do that. We have enough fuel. Oh, the fuel just ran out. No, the fuel ran out before we could complete the maneuver. We will hopelessly overshoot the KC. But drastic situations mean drastic measures. Let's invert that space shuttle and let's get our landing safe. We need to do that. No other choice or this will splash down in the ocean and everybody dies. And you see, it's working. And then we just need to exit the roll and safely glide towards the KSC. With that, the Kerbals are saved. It has been a long old journey. Now this video is over, but if you can't get enough of this channel, watch that video about a submarine I sent too late. It's quite interesting. But then see you next time, whenever that will be. Goodbye.